when I told that we are building this station, we are building a station, you want to complete in this summer, and he laughed, ha 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 ha. But the chances of success were given no more than 15%. And the Prime Minister herself kept on the line. Can you still do it? My answer to her was, if I don't do it, I don't come back. And there was a war cry, we shall do it. India was very keen to get into Antarctic uh, matters. India was very keen to be a part of the Antarctic Treaty so that uh, you have a say in all the things in Southern Oceans in and around Antarctica. For that, it was necessary to have a permanent base in Antarctica so that you can demonstrate that you are capable and interested in Antarctic research. Now, I'm basically a seismologist, an earthquake engineer. Department of Ocean Development had been formed by that time. So I was called for a discussion meeting. So when I went there, there were another 10, 10 12 scientists like me sitting there. And uh, I was fourth or fifth. I went and made a presentation. The committee was chaired by Dr. Hassim and there were two or three other experts. They liked the proposal but said that we cannot afford to give you a manpower of five people. They again said that I'm we are sorry that we are not accepting your proposal, but would you consider to be the leader of this expedition? So I called my wife. My wife uh, was in Trivandrum. We had two daughters at the time, aged uh, nine and 12. And of course, they did not know much about Antarctica. And uh, Antarctica was a really hawa those days. People did not know because there was no communication, nothing. And all kind of stories. But they finally said that uh, whatever you think is correct, please go ahead. So with that kind of a situation, I called Dr. Kasim. Same late evening and I said that I'm ready to accept the, the, the leadership. So we went to see the Prime Minister at about 4.30 in the evening. And uh, Prime Minister was very happy to see a young person uh, being given the leadership. And, and uh, finally, the team was selected. Uh, we had a team of 16 scientists, and there were eight total team was 81 members. The rest of the people were from Corps of Engineers, from Army for building. Then there was a a, a group of uh, Air Force people. 12 of them to, to take care of flying in Antarctica. They had two Mi-8 helicopters and the support staff. And there was a team from Navy, again 12 people, including pilots and maintenance of two alerts for the Chetak helicopters. And we were taken to Machui Glacier for training because many of my colleagues had never been, had never seen snow or ice in their lives. So in Machui Glacier, which is at the height of, I think, 16 or 17,000 feet, there's ice, ice, snow, ice everywhere. Uh, people were trained how to walk, how to find crevices, how to pitch tents, how to avoid cold injuries. Cold injuries are that you dress yourself to keep yourself warm. And when you move a lot, you can sweat on your toes. And then you sit down and then that sweat freezes because the temperature outside is minus four, minus five. And that causes the cold injuries and you can lose your toes in that. Uh, we had hired Finn Polaris. It was a Finn ship. And uh, it was collecting all the necessary material to set up a prefabricated station in Antarctica. So that ship started moving. It was collecting material from all over European countries. And it uh, was supposed to reach Goa from where we were to start by end of uh, November 1983. We reached uh, Goa and uh, every person, all the people had accumulated there and ship had just arrived. And Dr. Kasim took me to the ship and introduced me to the captain of the ship and said, from now onwards, Harsh Gupta is in charge and whatever he says is the last word. 
and uh, finally we left on 3rd of December 1983. From the next day onwards, uh, we started having meetings, talking about the timelines, because we had 60 days time to construct this station. You think of uh, digging 620 square meter, and then you have to make a double story building, two wings, they should be isolated uh, from everything. And then there should be heating there. There should be a, a medical room, laboratories, place for 12 people to sleep, etc., etc., etc. All to be done in 60 days. Out of 60 days, several days are lost, giving 30 days for loss due to blizzards and whiteouts. We finally reached uh, Antarctica on, uh, I think it was uh, 26th of December and we anchored the ship and uh, we went and saw the place in the Piston Bully and decided that that's where the station is going to come. On 29th, this helicopter, understanding I was on the deck of the ship, it did not gain adequate height, it started moving and the underslung load got stuck with the railing of the ship. It pulled the helicopter and the rotor blades of the helicopter hit the plane of the ship and it crashed on water helicopter. And since there was a rope below it, it turned turtle and started sinking. So I immediately launched a Elliot smaller helicopter to pick up the people if they can come out. Now, since it turned turtle, it moved away from the ship. And since that plexiglass window was there, there were five occupants, they could break open that plexiglass window. So if the plexiglass window was not there, they couldn't come out. And uh, this Chetak went and uh, picked two of them. One caught hold of the ladder, other one when they were going up, the other one caught hold of his legs. And they started moving to the ship. Halfway through, the person down below fell in the water because he had no strength left in his arms. And short of the ship, the second person also fell. So I stopped that operation and I got all those five people picked by the rescue boat. And the doctors were waiting for him, for them. So if I did not have that hospital room, we couldn't have taken care of them. Now it was important to inform everything to Dr. Kasim. And Dr. Kasim said that uh, you must inform the Prime Minister. I didn't have to wait. Within 10 minutes, there was a call from Prime Minister's office. And the Prime Minister herself came on the line. Her first question, is everyone safe? Arsh, is everyone safe? I said they have been exposed to cold water, hypothermia may be have settled, but uh, we are trying our very best to save them. Second question, can you still do it? I was not prepared for that question, but as I told you, I don't bend before Palam. My answer to her was, if I don't do it, I don't come back. A long pause, and then go ahead and do it. The captain of the ship took me to his cabin and asked, hey, Dr. Gupta, when do we leave? I said, this is the first time and last time you're asking this question. We will leave only after completing the station. And there was a war cry. We shall do it. And that changed everything. A lot of days lost in blizzards, etc., etc. We visited the Russian uh, station there, which was uh, about half an hour's flight from our station. And there I met the leader. He was very happy to see because he had not gone back to Russia for the last three years. And when I told that we are building this station, you are building a station, you want to complete in this summer, and he laughed, ha, 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 ha. Because everyone, I was the chances of success were given no more than 15%. No country had ever built a station in Antarctica in one Antarctic summer. Finally, the station was ready on 24th of February. The captain had already told me that we must leave on 1st of March because the sea had started freezing. I again asked Dr. Kasim, what should I do? Should I leave these people behind? 
And the answer was, you are at the spot, you take your own decision. Now, Amulya, imagine I leave those people behind and if the station does not survive, you can't get them back. There is nothing. To my good fortune, a heavy blizzard came on 25th of February. And that lasted for three days and it touched the extreme values ever reported for that part. And the station withstood it with small little problems, which uh, the engineers were able to tackle. So that gave us a lot of confidence. And uh, as the captain of the ship had given us a time to leave on 1st of March, I was so happy that February had 29 days in 1984. So 28th February, the, the blizzard got over and uh, we decided to leave and there were a lot of things to be completed before leaving that was all done on 29th of february on 1st of march we sailed off leaving back 12 people uh return journey was uh, of course there were a lot of talking etc etc but the few things that i discovered many of my colleagues had lost their toes due to old injuries and I told them that, why didn't you tell me I would have sent you back to the ship? And they said that was the, exactly the reason that we didn't tell you, because we didn't want to shy away from the hard work. So I'm going to sum it up. The construction of uh, a station on 620 square meter of space, complete with all the facilities, was never done before and uh, has been not done since then. And you know, the aim to achieve some goal, to be able to set up the station. I'm saying I'm very lucky to be involved uh, with many things uh, in my life. I was involved in setting up the tsunami warning system for our country after the 26th December tsunami in 19, 2004. But nothing like Antarctica. Because there was action, there was science, there was challenge, and there was opportunity.